Hey guys, welcome to Happy Wax TV, and hey let's talk horror. Let's talk horror. Max Master. Max Master. Doctor Professor. Doctor Professor. And Tom Mysterio. And myself. Happy Wax. Happy Wax. And uh, yeah, so tonight we are talking actually about a topic that I really enjoy because, I mean, probably seventy-five percent of the movies I like are B-style horror movies. So um, that's what we're going to talk tonight is B-style horror movies and our the ones that we like um, or you know. I mean, there's a thousand of them out there, so we may not, you know, you may not agree with what we say, but this is our, you know, top four or five B-horror flicks, and uh, let's, we should do a definition of what a B-horror movie is, because there's a lot of misconception of what they are, so, do you want to do it, or you want Dr. me to do it? Dr. Uh, professor, I, I was, handle this one. I, I, absent-minded professor here forgot <laughs> his uh, technology devices, so I am unable to uh, compute. Okay, well, we'll give, I'll give a, <laughs> I'll give a quick... B horror, okay. Oh, Professor Happy Wax. Professor Happy Wax. Here you at the. Uh, well, a B, a B horror movie stems from back in the fifties when they would show double features, and a B horror movie or, or any kind of a B movie would be one that would kind of follow the higher budgeted movie, you know, in the said kind double of like feature. The, the A side of an album, the yeah, B exactly. side of the That's single. Exactly what kind it is. Yep, and that kind of came. B B movies are kind of. You know, most notable in the in the realm of horror movies, sci-fi, definitely exploitation, and western movies for sure. And then you know, there's there's other ones, but that's kind of the four that they kind of fall under. And uh, but the, the kind of the B movie has gone of the wayside now, and now it's just kind of called like a low budget movie or an amateur style movie. Not so much amateur, but a lower budgeted movie. So, but again, low budget is a B movie because that's technically what a B movie is from the get go is just a lower budgeted movie and it doesn't have the same kind of quality as a fucking blockbuster would. So that's what we're Yes, yes. So and I have actually it's funny because when I did my list I did for most of the movies what it cost to make and then what it actually did in the theater. So yeah a lot of these ones are but anyways that's what we're talking about is kind of lower budgeted B movies that we grew up with and the ones that we like so why don't you get us going i'm gonna start by cheersing oh. episode number six of episode uh, number six yes let's talk horror Yay. because it's going pretty good Jing. all right terribly thirsty i brought a list and the first one <laughs> on my list is uh a 1976 classic which i've already touched on in our favorite horror movies that scared us but it's the, it's squirm uh, 1976 has got Don Scardino and Patricia uh, Piercy <laughs> in it. Probably people we don't even. Know. I think Don Scardino was in a bunch of shit, but I mean, it's got a recognizable face. It's it's about uh, uh, electrified worms in, in the southern states, and the worms are like they've got these little pinchers. I don't want to talk too much about it because we already touched on it. If you've been watching, um, let's talk horror. But I had to put it in there because it was it was one of those movies that was on TV, and it just freaked me right out as a kid and there's something freaky about these worms because they got like little mouths on them and mm -hmm. they got these little pinchers and they you know they ate people in the film and it was just classic be more b movie campiness i had to put it in there again yeah. so well worms and having little pinchy things would really work on you know our, our physical reaction to like bugs and insects oh, it's just yeah. the, the revulsion because they're so alien to us yeah i wouldn't want to bunch of worms on him. Yeah. yeah, there's good scenes in there where like the worms are hanging on the guy's face. He comes out of the and he starts crawling like you you say you like that scene the freak yeah, deal where he crawls up the kid. stairs. Yeah. Oh. It was it was creepy. If you yeah, ever seen Squirm, you gotta check it out. And it's it's totally uh, not uh, I yeah, I know. have I have run up the stairs looking behind me when I was a kid a few times and Squirm was one of the movies that did it for me. There you know that the whole movie is good and you know it's tolerable. But when I was a kid, that scene where he was going up the stairs like that yeah. in kind of worm form, man, I just, uh, just thinking about it. There you go. So, anyways, yeah, what a good movie. Me? Okay, so, my, uh, I have, again, as we all do, have many B-horror movies that we like. Um, but one of my favorite ones is Piranha. Um, I remember seeing that movie as a kid, and it terrified me. Um, and a couple things, too. And that was right around the time, you know, like, I was... You know, a kid and Jaws was still 
big. And it's funny too because I wrote and made some notes here. Um, Steven Spielberg has said that that is his favorite knockoff film, you know, because there was tons of movies made, you know, kind of like knocking off Jaws and the Piranha. Deep. Yeah, you know what I mean. And Spielberg has openly said that Piranha, 1978's Piranha, is like his favorite of all time out of all the the movies that have been made. And it was only made for, well, I guess I shouldn't say only made because back in that time it was quite a bit of money, I guess, but eight hundred thousand dollars. But it made sixteen million at the box office, so that is a fair chunk of change. And uh, what else? Well, I mean, what's the synopsis? It was a bunch of fish, a U.S. Uh, military research engineered fish that they were going to use in Vietnam. And mm -hmm. before that happens, one of the scientists lets them out and mm -hmm. then all hell breaks loose. But, you know, even watching this movie back in the day, it was pretty gory. You know what I mean? And it was really well done. And even like the little, I can't do it, but the, the noise when the piranhas were eating it, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know what I mean? But, shit. And another thing too is, and again, when I was a kid and I watched this, obviously this didn't make any difference to me because I just enjoyed the movie. But now that I'm older and I actually research movies and i actually you know kind of semi care who made them and stuff but i mean joe dante was the director of this movie and he's got some fucking great movies but produced by roger corman i fucking yeah. love roger corman man he's like one of my all-time favorite yeah, that's um, directors and yeah, he's, yeah man he's one of the top like b movie oh name. like you, you you can't mention b movies and not say roger corman yep <laughs> i mean we just we just watched uh death race Right. Well, the new one he had, oh, Death yeah, yeah. Race 2000, yeah. whatever the fuck it is. It's on Netflix, actually, and it's fantastic. So, I mean, I love this guy's movies. So, but anyways, that's my that's my number one for me. Um, it was Piranha from 78, which also, sorry, I don't sorry, which spawned a few other Piranha movies, which are actually fucking good. So, they're maybe not Double D, but <laughs> the first Piranha remake was actually really good and gory, and it was like a blood fest, so... Well, All right, Doctor Professor. I, I'm gonna uh, go back to some of my staples here because if you haven't seen these movies and you like horror, then you know this is one I think you should <laughs> certainly see. Uh, Evil Dead, no mm. shocker there. Yep. That, you know, which was also talked about in uh, our favorite scary movies. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, once again, this is this is a movie that is a low budget horror. It was almost, if I remember correctly, like. Sam Raimi just coming out of, you know, just cutting out of school sort of thing. Or it was a, re, a redo of one of his school projects or something along those lines. But what they did with, you know, a, a low-budget movie was one of the bloodiest. And, you know, the, there were some things in, the, in that movie that just really, you know, was very uh, uh, innovative, um, again, and... It creeped me out as, as a younger viewer. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's well done. And I, I really like uh, the world that they create, with, mm -hmm. you know, with just a cabin. Mm -hmm. there. Like, it's just, it's, I like the language. Yeah. Manta. 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 Yeah. And they're really, like, they're really, when it came out, there really was nothing else out there like it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it and was just. That like, had some stop motion in it, too. Absolutely. It did. And that's what made it so fucking good. Yeah, Excellent. no, it was it was awesome. So lots and lots of blood. Yep. <laughs> yep. So it was a it was a good movie. Okay, The Island of Dr. Moreau, 1977, Burt Lancaster yes. and uh, and Michael York. Yep. That movie, I was only like I was seven, but that movie freaked me right the fuck out, man. Yep. It was like, holy fuck! And that in the end, the guy gets turned into like the snake. Mm -hmm. That just I fucking had nightmares for a year. <laughs> with snakes and big fucking eyeballs that yep. look like humans like that movie was just killer yep. I don't know it, I love that version of it and then of course it was redone in, in the 90s with, yeah. uh, you know, see uh, that's I was just going to say that's, that's a shame that it was remade because the remake was horrible Yeah. so you actually if you want to see a good version of it watch the original one go back and watch because the remake is, is fucking terrible now I'm not sure if it's if the '77 one was the original. I, I don't know. Was it, it one before I know the one you're talking about, but it was good. I, I don't think I'm not sure on that. Maybe you guys can uh, sort of help us out on that. But yeah. the '77 version, absolutely cool. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. And Burt Lancaster usually played a good guy, yeah. and that was what it was like. You know, here he is. This what this fucking guy is like doing this shit. Yeah, like, yeah. He's yeah. usually played the good guy, but that was one that really got <laughs> me. So you guys check that one out. That was a like. Channel 43 movie. I yeah. believe. I saw yeah. that on Channel 43. For sure. Too, yeah, it was so. always on TV. But I enjoyed that movie. Okay. So, this is in my top five all-time 
any any horror movies, and I even have a tattoo right there of the tall man on my arm, is Phantasm. I, I love this whole franchise. It, it It's fucking awesome. And it amazes me how, how many people come up and ask who he is. Don't know who, or have seen or even heard of Phantasm. I'm like... Man, oh man, like I don't, I guess it's a, I guess it's like a real true B horror movie where, you know, it was made on a shoestring budget, the, the first movie. In fact, I, I have it written down here in my notes. Um, the first one was made in 1979, but it was made for 300000 which isn't a whole ton of cash, but it made $12 million at the box office. And that's quite a bit of money for a lot of people not even knowing who this movie is. And then it got picked up um, by a major studio. I think it wasn't Universal. I can't remember who it got picked up by. Do I have it written down here? No, I don't. But it got picked up by, by Universal. And then there was a whole shitstorm from Phantasm fans because they... What happened was is one of the main characters, Michael Michael Adam Baldwin, sorry, I didn't I forget his name, but he wasn't in the actors' union at the time, so he couldn't be in this movie. So they replaced him with another actor, James LaGrosse, who's in the second one, and it's got the second one because it's Universal has a massively huge budget. But it was made, the second one was made for where is it here? Three million dollars ahead of budget, and it only did seven million at the box office. So if that's not the fans saying, fuck you, then I don't, you know what I mean? So don't mess with the uh, lineup, exactly. So the third one, the third one, which came out, I think, almost 10 years after that, was Phantasm Three: Lord, Lord of the Dead in 94, um, was back to a smaller, but it still had over a million dollars, but, I mean, we're moving into, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, and then, it, and then, it, budget era. yeah, and then from there on in, and then it was just two years ago, they, they released Ravager, which was fucking amazing, because nobody knew that this movie was getting made, like, it just... It was like a surprise, like no one knew, and it was great because it kind of ended the entire story, and Angus Grimm, you know, sadly passed away less than a year after that was being filmed, but he was in his, he was in his mid-80s, I think, almost 90s, so, but he was the tall man, but he, he finished it, you know what I mean, and they finished the, all the movies off, and there was, you know, from beginning to end, and I mean, it was kind of like a fan's dream, so, but it all started with Phantasm, which was a fantastic movie, and... I can't remember the first time I saw it. Or a phantasmic movie. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Also. Oh, Freddy. But it was, yeah, it's, it's it's like in my top five movies of all time, not just B-movies. I I love this movie. And, and I'll just be very quick. It's so funny because I actually have Don Coscarelli's cell phone number. Because when we showed a movie, when we showed Dawn of the Dead, when I was calling around to get... I called Sony Pictures to see if they had the rights, not knowing who had the rights for it. And uh, Tanya, who works at Sony, said, well, you can just call Don himself, and he can tell you. And I was like, Don Coscarelli? And she goes, yeah, I have a cell phone number. I don't know if she was, she thought I was some somebody who, bigger than I actually was, or if she did that accidentally, but she gave me his fucking cell phone number. No, I've never called it because I'm too afraid to, but I do have it on my phone. So maybe one day before I die, I'll shoot him a text and just say how awesome it is. His franchise is, but uh, yeah. Anyways, for me, number, I guess my second favorite of all time is Phantasm. So, all right. Well, the second one that I'll mention here. Uh, once again, I don't have all my technology with me, <laughs> so I can't channel my professor professional wisdom here. Um, however, Return of the Living Dead, <laughs> and yes, I verified yeah. this. I looked that one up to make sure it was considered a B movie, and yep. it, it fell into that category, and I was so thankful. Because of the um, of, of 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 the remakes or you know reboots or anything yep. of the Living Dead's, this was one of my first and favorite ones that I saw like in the eighties, yep. and uh, I thought it was just I don't know it blew me away as as a as a as a zombie movie just as an entertaining movie. Uh, I mean, it pretty much has everything you can want in. <laughs> a horror film, uh, and of course I'm sticking to my theme. I I, I tend to have uh, a lot of movies that have uh, camp humor in it versus definitely campy um, movie there. Holy Christ! You yeah. know, so it, it's in that vein. You're not you're not getting there. You're not watching this movie to be terrified and uh, you mm-hmm. know like not be able to shut your lights off at night but I, I mean everything in it was fantastic I mean the acting was great it's a B movie but the acting yep. was great from all parts uh, I mean
mean, the special effects were even amazing. Like, the zombies. Oh, yeah. I think uh, one of the parts that I still I find hilarious is when the, uh, the there's a guy in a freezer, and he's, he's got no head. He's just hanging on a meat hook or yeah. what have you. But he comes back, and he's running around, and everybody's scrambling to yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. subdue this thing, and they don't know what's going on. Because Classic. Yep. The whole thing's just, just setting off at that point. And but. a couple cool things about Return of the Living Dead. It's funny, because I was, well, my number three, but I was going to talk about Return of the Living Dead, too, is because it was, Return of the Living Dead was spawned from um, John Russo, who helped produce and make Night of the Living Dead with George Romero. And then Dan O'Bannon, who was the director, is awesome because he was one of the writers for Alien, and he also helped write Alien. Now, he's, he's passed away. He passed away a long time ago. But, I mean, this guy's like, he's not like a ham and egger. He is like a big name, you know, in the film industry. So it was, it was pretty awesome. And some of the other guys he's worked with, like John Carpenter on Dark Star and, and some other movies. But... I, mean, wonder, I wonder if he was going through a divorce and he just needed money. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> He'd be working on a but, movie, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but um, I mean, definitely. I mean, definitely. Uh, Return of the Living Dead was was a great movie. But then you know he wrote Alien, and he was one of the writers on Aliens. So I mean, this guy's he's pretty awesome. So, and it's I I mean really the Return of the Living Dead was a classic, right? Because. That was the first time we ever saw Running Zombies. Well, I mean, there's some other movies that we'll get to, but, I mean, this was the first kind of, I guess, big mainstream one that, you know, worth running. And then this is the first time that zombies were interested in brains. Because in all the zombie movies leading up to that, there was no mention of, I want to eat your brains. This is the movie that started all that. So Tina. Yeah. (laughs) Eat your brains. Yeah, man. So this 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 movie, you know, and this is a movie I watch at least once a year. So it's 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 awesome. And it had full frontal nudity nudity of a very beautiful woman. Oh yes. Dancing on a grave. Yeah. So I mean it's win win. So but I I really do. I enjoyed this movie. I'm glad you picked that one. Okay. Um so Nightmare City, 1980. Yes. Uh, Umberto Lenzi with, uh, as the director. So it's an Italian uh, horror movie. Starts off with the plane coming in. The zombies yep. come pouring out of it. It's like an irradiated plane. As the, uh, you know, they, Somewhere this plane hit, a, hit radiation and they come out and they're all scabbed up. And, and uh, all hell hits, uh, hits the fan. Shit, you know, and there's, but they're running. This is the first movie I saw running yep. zombies. And yep. they, they just get out and book it everywhere and start, you know, there's yep. lots of graphic stuff. Probably really sexist, but it, I mean, it was like 1980. Mm-hmm. You know, there's like stuff in there that's world. really, really, you know, I don't want to, I don't repeat it because we're living in this era where stuff like that's kind of, but it was, it freaked me out because, you know, I mean, yeah, it was, uh, it was not like uh, the, the, uh, the typical Dawn of the Dead zombies that shambled around or the yeah. Night of Living Dead zombies. It was like, or even shockwaves, it was like yeah. they booked it and ran. So that was the first time I saw running the zombies, and it freaked me right out. We, lots of gore, lots of yeah. You know, we watched it at Brett's house. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty oh, yeah, sure. That's sure, the first yeah. time I saw it was at Brett's. It house. was a uh, it was a late night flick yeah. at our at our buddy's place, and uh, it had Hugo Stiglitz and Laura Trotter in it. Hugo Stiglitz was like this uh, pretty macho Italian guy that was bitch slapping <laughs> a lot of uh, <laughs> female actresses in this movie. Which you know, again, it's so it's such a sexist uh, you know outdated movie oh, yeah. for for the times but it was but, it, it was just can't it was b-movie man it was b-movie horror it was everything those movies were about absolutely and uh so that's mine yeah that yeah. oh, was a good movie and it's a shame because um like a lot of people i don't think would have seen that movie no. you know what i mean like i mean not nowadays it's a shame because there's so many fucking good old movies that are going to get passed up mm-hmm. so hopefully watching us we can show you some movies that you may not have heard of that you might want to check out because that is definitely if you're a zombie fan that's that's definitely a flick that you want to fucking see yeah it should be on your list for sure so but and again i've said this before i'm not a huge fan of italian horror movies but that that was a pretty good one so there's a a handful that i do like and that's definitely one of them so yeah all right me all right so my net number three and again i there's so many obscure b movies which i'll get if we have more time but this one i had to say is night of the living dead it's a fucking classic. It was made on a budget of like 114000 and it made $30 million at the box office. And honestly, I mean, people can argue it's not the original zombie film because there were zombie movies before that, but this is like the standalone, and this is what all zombies are... Based on. Based on from that point on 
1968 to nowadays. This is, you know, whenever you think of a zombie movie, I don't care if it's 28 days later, your fast running zombies are slower. Everything falls back to this movie. Night of the Living Dead, the original one. And yeah, it's, because it's, before that, zombies were more like the voodoo zombie yeah, kind of, you yep. know, brought like the mesmerized. Yeah, and there's so, some good ones. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think there's uh, the Bela Lugosi one, I think, is White Zombie, I think. And then there's I Walk with a Zombie. There's a few good ones from back, like, in the day, like, way. But this is the one that all zombie movies from 68 on are, you know. The mold. Yeah. And, uh, oh, I, I wrote this down. Because I made notes, and I, I was the one thing that I thought was cool, and the reason why this movie at the time was so like, well, first of all, it was awesome, and there was nothing else like it even close to this, like people eating other people on film, like and actually showing it, ripping the, I mean, for that time. But this movie came out one month before the MP AA was created, so p- parents were sending their kids. To go see this movie because they didn't know because there was no rating system yeah, yeah. so they didn't know what it was and like i mean people were fucking terrified when they left this movie you know, like little 10 year old kids yeah. were going to see this movie which which was awesome because we started watching horror movies so there's nothing wrong with that parents like that your kids watch horror movies but i'm just saying back in the day the mpaa wasn't even around it was no. came out a month before so there was no rating on this movie for the longest time mm-hmm. so and then after it came out and then all hell hit the, you know, and then they, they created it and then they pulled it from the theater and gave it a rating and then put it back in and whatever. But there was that period of time where fucking anyone could go see this movie and it was, and it was great. And now anybody can use this movie in anything they want because it's in free domain, domain, yeah, yeah. public domain. So, you know, they didn't reserve the the rights for it and there it sits along with, uh, I think, um, what other movies are in public domain? The one movie that you like, um, House on Haunted Hill, the original one. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. in public domain too. There's a go on a public domain site and just check out all the fucking cool movies that are in there. It's it's amazing. It's amazing. So, anyways, my number three is is that number three or two? Uh, I've done uh, three. Okay, yes. and this is my third round three. Yes, yeah, so I'm yeah, Night of the Living Dead for me. So, all right, Doctor so Professor. I'll throw in another one once again. I don't think it's gonna scare anyone uh, by any means, but it's certainly an entertaining film. It's all right. <laughs> Horribly entertaining, I might say. Uh, <laughs> Troll 2. <There's>... Oh, shit. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That is certainly a... Uh, it's a stinker, but it's a winner. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> On there. Like, it's... it's all has absolutely nothing to do with the first movie. On there. Yeah. And I don't think it even had a... It couldn't have had any of a budget. Because <laughs> I don't think any of the actors were anything were actors. Actually. Those are some of the best kind, though, where they, where you don't know where they, who they are, and who they, they are show up again. again. Yeah. yeah, but you know, it, it had the cheesy effects, uh, mm-hmm. once again, practical effects, um, and just the lines, the dialogue, everything about this movie is just it's it's priceless to see. Yep. Um, you know, there's there's one scene that always sticks out in my head, and it's it's when uh, I don't know the character's name, but it's a young uh, adolescent male, He's got some big old glasses on him, <laughs> and he comes to some realization, and his uh, his acting is priceless. It's just yep. so almost deadpan. He just sits there and he's like, "Oh my oh god, god, yeah." <laughs> <laughs> that that is that is classic. They're eating them, and, and he was and he was reading it off a of cue yeah. card. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah it's so great uh the way it's done like the, you know it's <laughs> you have to see it if, if you're looking for a good campy uh movie then that's one. did you did you mention that it was rated probably one like the worst horror movie ever made oh yeah. no i didn't yeah didn't, didn't mention if you that. look it up if you look it up online like worst horror movies it's in the top three all the time i think Cent- oh, yeah. human centipede three is in there and i don't know what else is in there but i know um I know that movie is uh, Troll Two. Yeah, Troll Two, <laughs> worst horror movie ever made. So, yes. and it's, it doesn't mean internet trolls. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's no, it has that title. You know what I mean? It's, it's but it's what makes it so good. It's kind of like The Room, where it's like so good it's bad. You know what I mean? It just yeah. you, you actually it's, it's the, a good popcorny Saturday night with your buddies flick. What a good hoot and howl, and it's a good movie. So The Room actually shows up in uh, a lot of lists for uh, like top 
Like in, in near the top spots for a lot of the uh, B movies. Oh, absolutely! I mean, I if there's ever was... a classic B movie, it's it's that one. You know You're what I mean? tearing me apart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I wanted to include it, but but we're talking horror. Well, or sci-fi. hey, yeah. I mean, um, if, if it's so horribly bad, I mean, you can include it in horror. So no, yeah. but no, it's yeah. I'd, and I was thinking of that movie too, not to say it, but I was like, I was hope somebody at least mentions it. You know what I mean? Because it's support Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go Maximum Overdrive 1986. Stephen King directed it. Yep. Uh, of course, he, Emilio Estevez is in it, plays the main character, and the diner owner was uh, be, like that, uh, like a character actor, B-movie actor, I guess, Pat Hingle, mm-hmm. and played always played a prick, just like the guy from, what was his name from, from Jaws, the, uh, the, the mayor from Jaws? Um, oh. Um, you just mentioned him. Yeah, you just mentioned him. In last, the last video. Last episode. On Jaws. But anyways, you know, the mayor, he was just, you, if you see the guy, you'll know him. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, I just love that movie. It got, it got me as soon as the comet went over and, and the kid was like, and the, and the pop machine started shooting the, yeah. the, the pop out at everybody and, yeah. the, and the, you know, the riding mower started going and I, I, I'm a huge fan of Stephen King. I read all the books and, yep. um, you know, I just, I don't know, I just something about that movie. The soundtrack back in the 80s, if you lived in, if you lived in the 80s and you like you know, music, the, uh, it was on the radio, it mm-hmm. really sucked, so, I mean, it had a cool soundtrack, it was all ACDC. Murray Hamilton. Murray Hamilton, yeah. that was the, uh, mayor in Jaws, so, yeah. but this guy, you know, Pat Hingle, if you see that, if you watch the flick, you'll, you'll know, uh, well, maybe you won't, because we're getting older, but this guy was, uh, he was a classic guy that was in lots of movies, and always played the prick. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, well, Emilio that, was stuck in the restaurant, yeah, and the, and the I, trucks are going around the restaurant. Yeah, it's no, just great. I love that movie, and it's it's surprising, too, because when you look it up online, it doesn't have that good of a rating, but I fucking, I love it, and the soundtrack was awesome. I'm a huge yeah. ACDC fan, and, I mean, to have one, actually, other than, well, I mean, Daft Punk did it for Tron, but you don't see too often no. when one band does the entire soundtrack. Yeah, and they made that, that soundtrack for that movie, yeah, like, uh, so. you know, Who Made Who, right? Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's, so. I mean, so I mean, it was just kind of cool, campy, nineteen eighty six, yeah. campy stuff, you know. Yeah. Was, and again, and, and it was released on July twenty fifth, nineteen eighty six. So mm-hmm. that was two days ago. Uh, yeah. And, uh, oh, happy and belated. Thirty two years ago. Yeah. No, it was. And again, <laughs> it's that. a good Holy practical shit. effect movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's no CGI, no. and it's just that's one of those movies. I hope never gets remade. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just it just wouldn't do it any justice mm-hmm. to bring it up to date. It's just one of those movies that should just stay. You know, and don't don't touch it. And uh, yeah, I just I I love that movie. So. It also it's also one of my favorite genres, which is kind of like uh, it's um, apocalyptic, right? I, I love that kind of yeah. stuff. But well, anyways, I mean, it's actually yeah. relevant to today too, because look at all the the technology that's coming out. You know what I mean? Like, who's to say? Uh, Doctor uh, Professor had an interesting. Uh, tidbit of knowledge about Stephen King about what the flick is about I didn't know this but you told us before we went on the air tonight about this one. Oh huh? yeah uh, and I just heard this story recently and I can't confirm it but uh, once again uh, with, with everything that's out there on the internet uh, this is something that I, I heard somebody talking about um, and they were saying that Maximum Overdrive was uh, pretty much about uh, Stephen King's addiction to cocaine Oh, at the time, I didn't even know that. So, so that, uh, once again, I don't have my technology, so I can't can't pull up the magics of the <laughs> internet on that one. So I just thought that was a, a, a crazy story because uh, if cool. if if you've seen the movie, it might make sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The metaphors. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> that was uh, yeah. We kind of we we got hit by a meteorite there. So uh, oh, back yes. to you. Back to me. Okay. So um, well, it's a toss up between about this movie and about 50 other ones. Oh, how many more are we going to do? We'll probably do what? Do one more, maybe. Do one more each? Yeah, sure. Because right. I got two good ones there. Maybe even three, but I can bang them off the end quick. But anyways, for the next movie I picked is 2011's Hobo with a Shotgun. Oh. Man, I'll <laughs> tell you, I saw this movie in the theater, and I swear I was the only person that liked it in the theater. And I, I'm like, what are you people watching this movie? I think nowadays everybody wants big budget and if you throw in like a, actually, I was surprised that this movie even came to the theater. To be honest with you, I'm glad it did though, because I'm glad I had the opportunity to see it in the theater. But maybe a quick rundown here. So it was um, 2011, um, and it had one of my my 
I love this guy he, in the movies he's in this Rudger Hauer mm. I fucking love this guy he's, he's awesome and I was I was trying to find this movie that he was in when I watched when I was younger and I can't remember what it was called and I couldn't find it but um, there was him and a woman and uh, Christopher Lambert did kind of a movie as it as well but they get put in this prison camp and they have this these necklaces on if you go outside the prison camp your head explodes there's been two or three movies that are kind of along the same lines but he was in this one movie and I I loved it but I mean he's been in Batman Blind Fury uh, obviously was in Blade Runner and then yeah. the one movie that that I, I the, read, Os- the Osterman Weekend Osterman yeah Weekend. the Osterman Weekend but Surviving the Game was I loved that movie with with Ice T where they they take Ice T the homeless guy and then mm-hmm. you know <laughs> yeah. you, you, Ice T the homeless what they, guy. Yeah. you said the did he get divorced or something yeah <laughs> did, did you say the Hitcher yeah yeah, yeah. 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 I mean he, I mean this, I, you could list fifty movies this guy's been in he's he's so fucking famous but I mean he killed this 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 character and if you haven't seen this movie. I mean, it's a vigilante movie. So basically, he's a hobo, and he—I can't remember what city he moves to. It's either Los Angeles or Chicago. But he—he he just kind of ups and moves there. And obviously, he's living on the street. But he sees all the, you know, people getting raped and robberies and and all this shit. And he—he he just loses it. So he takes justice into his own hand, and he has his fucking twenty-two gauge shotgun, and he just goes around and starts blowing people away. And I mean, it's—it's it's so fucking amazing. Like, it, and the other thing too that I loved about this movie was Jason Iser directed it. And for those of you who don't know Jason Eisner, he did Treevenge. Remember that Christmas movie where the Christmas trees? I mean, that when I saw that movie, I was at my daughter's soccer game, and I was, like, screaming. I've never laughed so hard. Maybe maybe uh, Dead Alive, but other than that, I've never laughed so hard out loud to pretty much anything. Like, I was, people probably thought I was, like, on drugs or something because I had yeah, headphones on. Yeah, watching Treevenge, and I was like, who is this guy directing? You know what I mean? But he, he hasn't directed a lot. He, he's he's written a lot of movies. Or having a treasure. A treasure, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, good for you, Jason Eisner. You know what I mean? Like oh. he's, he's done some movies. Um, he, he, he helped write um, the Grindhouse movies with uh, Tarantino and, and Robert Rodriguez and some other movies, too, but... Um, I don't know, and it was a Canadian movie too, which is which is awesome too. So I don't know the budget on it, um, but I know it wasn't like huge. But uh, yeah, so for my number four is for B movies is Hobo with a Shotgun. If you haven't seen this movie, do yourself a favor and find it and watch it. You'll love it. Alrighty, I'll throw one out. It's a classic, which probably most people maybe in our age category and a bit lower and definitely above have seen or at least heard of. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. <laughs> yes, I was hoping someone would say that. Okay, good. Is, uh, you know, from the best of my recollections, is a parody of horror. It is. Uh, yeah. On that one. And, you know, it's taking probably one of the least offensive or, or least killer like substance mm-hmm. a tomato, a little round tomato, <laughs> turn it into a mutated living thing, which is actually out and killing people. I mean, how much more. Yeah. <laughs> ridiculous can you get you want to know what I heard on, on the other day and I don't want to ruin the movie is that if they're gonna I think they're fucking remaking it oh uh, no I know Yeah, I, I, I don't know what YouTube channel I was watching but they had mentioned maybe that, it'll be called Attack of the Killer Tomato Sauce yes maybe I don't know I hope they don't <laughs> but there I guess there's there's talks about remaking it and I don't know why but I hope oh, it's no. I hope it doesn't yeah. happen. It'll so. never. It'll never. Ca- it'll never do good. No. It'll it, never catch on. It's, it, it's it, it would if it only goes after vegans. <laughs> 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 the number one vegan movie of exactly. all time. The killer vegan tomatoes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah no. I. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's like, like, all the all the keto vegan. diet people survive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I only eat meat. Oh shit. <laughs> all right. Well, I got a bunch written down here. I can. If you guys want to maybe list off some of the ones, because I, I don't, I don't yeah. have my list with me. Well, I got, I got at sure. least three more that I wanted, like that. Okay, I, well, I, I got, uh, I've got Children of the Corn, nineteen eighty four. Yep. Peter, uh, Peter Horton and Linda Hamilton, uh, also a Stephen King flick. I'm not sure who to direct, who directed or whatever, but I mean, I that's a classic. You know, what I mean, it's like, yep. It's got everything in it. It's got the creepy deserted town it's got evil kids mm-hmm. which you know at the time that was pretty creepy like it, you know in the beginning of the movie it kind of shows them sort of taking out the adults which was you didn't see that a whole lot right back in the day yep. in 1984 and uh it, it's, it's got the uh, supernatural side to it so it was i thought it was back then it was like a, a staple on the saturday night freaking series flicks absolutely you know? i like that movie it was yep. it was kind of cool horribly uh 
it had what four remakes or five not remakes yeah, but yeah. and they are they're all horrible they're so terrible, the original yeah. one is is the best by far yeah. so. yep 1984 one. okay so for me this movie and again um i i sometimes wondered when i was going down my list of b movies because there's so many that i like but you see some movies and you think there's no way it can be classified as a b movie and then you look it up and it is and i didn't realize the budget for this one was so small but it's night of the comet and this oh, is, I had that one on my list. Yeah, man, this is one of my favorite movies. Like of all, I, it, it's just a crazy movie. It was from 1984. Um, it was directed by Tom Eberhardt, and it stars Catherine Stewart, um, Robert Beltram, and Kelly Maroney, or whatever you say. But it was only made for seven hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. I can't believe that, and it it grossed fourteen million at the box office. Oh, so shit. it's it's good, just that's a good return. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I I just this movie is like if. I don't know how many times I've seen it. I've probably seen it probably 20, 30 times. This is a fucking good movie. But um, I hope they never remake it. Probably not. I, I hope can't not. can't see remake it. I hope they don't. I hope they don't. It's, but, it's cool because it's got that pink yeah, look to it. It's just, it was a know. good movie. And it came out at that time, you know, like, I don't know. I was just, you're a little bit younger and it just kind of really, I don't know, it hit a chord with me. And Freaked I, you out. Yeah, I, it was great. I mean, there wasn't a ton of zombies in it. Like, people kind of classify it as a zombie movie too, but it, it didn't really have a whole... It had no. a few zombie-ish people, but yeah, not... Yeah. But, um, I don't know, it just had a cool idea. I mean, it's been copied a number of times, but... They, uh, they, everybody disappears, yeah. right? In yeah. the night, and there's just a few people left. Yeah, and some are, of them the are main range. characters, the two main characters, the one, the younger girl, Kelly Maroney, falls asleep in her shed, which is a metal shed yeah, of some yeah. sort. Yeah. So she survives, and then her, her older sister um, sleeps over in the movie theater, in the projector room, which is concreted in, I guess. So it doesn't get the radiation either, but I mean, everybody at the party and, you know, her, her stepmom's a bitch and stuff and they're having a pool party and when the comet flies, everybody turns into that red, red dust, you know yeah. what I mean? So, but it's a, it's a great movie and I like the ending too because it just doesn't stay in the city because then it goes into that facility, you know what I mean? And yeah, it kind of yeah. adds to it. So I, re- I really like that movie. So that's, that's my number five if we're at five. All right. And I'll just throw this one out there because it's, I guess, generally or widely considered the Best worst B movie ever, uh, Plan Nine. Oh, from outer space. Classic. Yeah. Ed Wood. Ed Wood. Ed yep. Wood yeah. That has everything in it. It has the worst acting. It has people reading off cue cards. Yeah. On, on the scene. It's worse got, in the room. I don't know. Well. If there was, if there was. Gives a, it a run for its money. Yeah. If there was a template, I think for a B B movie, it would be Plan Nine yeah. from Outer Space because it was. It has aliens. Yeah. It has zombies. If I remember correctly. Yep. It does. Uh, yep. It has UFOs on strings. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. Yeah. So <laughs> UFOs on strings. Yeah. So I've only seen I've only seen it twice, but and I don't own it, and I probably should because it is a classic. But I'm glad that you said it because it is a fucking it is a good B movie. So I have just uh, done a complete brain dump there. Well, no, well, no, yeah. and it, you know what? And uh, the thing is, they remade it, but it was actually the Ed remake. Wood. Yeah. But the remake was pretty good, and it had George the Animal Steel in it, yep. and I think, and then Johnny Depp, right? So yep. the remake was actually was actually it, pretty good. Yeah, yeah Ed, Ed Wood was talent in there. Yeah, so was a, sure. that, that was a good, you know. I give props to that movie because they really did do a good job. I know you're itching. Chud, 1984. Oh, I was gonna say that. Director movie too. Douglas Cheek, uh, oh, great Cheek movie. or Greek or something, and yeah. and uh, the first time I ever saw Daniel Stern. Yeah. And the guy was freaky looking around the soup kitchen. That movie. Freaked me right the fuck out yeah. for some reason because it was like cannibalistic humanoid underground dwellers. Nicely done. Because you know, it, and it had the uh, the classic nineteen eighty four sort of uh, cause of it was yep. nuclear waste, which was big on everybody's <laughs> mind. You know, yep. like it was like it was just a, a movie of the times. Yeah, these guys come out of the, underneath the. It was it was freaky. You know, yep. like things pulling these street people into you know out of the soup kitchen and into the uh you know into the ground you know all those all the street people are like worried and running around and yeah michael stern or daniel stern's running the soup kitchen i, I thought that was like you know that movie is a i, I enjoy watching that one even now oh yeah so. yeah okay are we gonna are we gonna end it there yeah yeah probably okay i'm just gonna rank rhyme off two more because i wanted just just quickly okay so because I had them written down. So my, my one of my favorite movies, too, and this is of all time, um, not only did I enjoy the original, but I loved the remake, and I really don't care for remakes, is The Blob. Oh, man. The, the original? Yeah, or no, the original. Well, they're both good, but oh, I'm talking okay. the original. Because I had 1988 on here. Yeah. 
No, it was. This is uh, Steve McQueen's. It wasn't his first movie, but it was, it was his first movie as a lead. Like he was the lead in it, and it was only made for a hundred thousand dollars, and it grossed four million. And back in those days, that's a lot of money. That is a lot of fucking money. So. Um, the reason I wanted to include this one is because it's getting remade again. It's kind of like Night of the Living Dead where I think this is going to be the third or fourth remake of this movie. But um, hopefully they do it justice. But I, I, I remember watching the original one numerous times when I was a kid because it was always on TV. And then I went and saw the remake, which I believe had Samuel L. Jackson in it, I think. Did it have Samuel had Kevin Dillon and, no, um, and uh, yeah, I can't Shawnee remember. Smith in it. Are you talking about the 1988 88, one? yeah. Yeah, it had Kevin Dillon, Shawnee Smith, a bunch of other people, but they're probably the most... Shawnee Smith right. was no, in Yeah, Kevin I'm, I'm screwed most. up here. The remake that they're making has has uh, Samuel L. Jackson in it, if it gets remade. So, oh, motherfucking blob! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they... Um, On this plane. Yeah, but I went and saw that by myself. <laughs> I'm so sick of this motherfucking blob! At the Capitol Theater. Oh, Jesus. By myself. So it was great. I remember it was a Saturday afternoon and I, I fucking loved it. So, but that was, yeah, that one. And then I wanted to throw in, I was going to do Dead Alive, but it was a $3 million budget. That's so it's not really, uh, even though it was on that list, I thought, yeah, I can throw that in. But the other one that I really liked, and I don't know much about it, and I don't know if you guys remember this, is The Swarm, that Killer Bee movie. I don't. <laughs> oh, I think you're kind of Killer Bee movie. See so what you yeah. did there? <laughs> <laughs> I, when uh, I first saw this movie, I saw it at the theater, So and I saw it when I went to Thunder Bay to visit my grandparents, and my aunts and uncles, and my Aunt Rosa took me to go see it, so I was probably 12, 13 years old, and man, I was so scared that I couldn't sleep by myself that night, because bees, you know what I mean, I just, and I thought it was like a true story, and back at those, it might have been my Aunt Rosa playing with me too, saying that they're actually coming here or something like that, but man, when you're that age, and you see people getting, you know, Killed by by bees. I just freaked. I had to sleep with my grandpa that night. I slept in his bed because <laughs> I couldn't sleep by myself. So that movie, it just it just, and it was uh, it was directed. Who was it directed by? I don't know who. Oh, it was. It was directed and written by Arthur Herzog, and he he went on to make some some pretty big movies too. And it had Michael Caine in it and Richard Chamberlain. So it had a fairly good cast. I don't know the budget on it, but I don't know. What was, is it about B movies and things that eat you? Like Jaws, or we're well not Jaws. Uh, we talked about Piranha. Piranha. We talked about Squirm. We talked about uh, Swarm. Yeah. And there was one that yeah, there was one that was on my on my <laughs> list too was uh, the uh, the Naked Jungle with Charlton Heston with yeah. the ants. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was a, that yeah. was a classic fucking movie yeah. where things eat you as well. The ants. If you've never seen the Naked Jungle, that's a fucking great. Movie. Yeah. And the other thing I had there was two other movies too. I don't want to talk about them too much. But Creature from the Black Lagoon yeah. was oh, yeah. considered a B movie, which would make sense. Because, um, like again, originally B movies were shown after the big budget movie, right? Yeah, so, Creature, Creature from the Black Lagoon wasn't a huge budget movie. And then the other one too was the movie called. Remember the movie The Stuff? I was just gonna say. Oh that. yeah, that The Stuff. I fucking one. love that. That movie. was classic. Yes. That one was classic. Yeah, we yeah. should actually do a review on that yeah, one. So sure. it was it was awesome, and I was just flipping through, and it was again I didn't want to say too much about it because it was a million and a half budget, so it was kind of high for a B movie, but. Still, I mean, it tanked at the box office, and it just had that B movie style. But, and again, there's probably, you know, B movie fanatics that are saying, "Oh God, they missed all these movies and stuff." And I know, I mean, there's, but we're just trying to concentrate on the horror movies, right? Because I know a lot of B movies are like the exploitation movies. Yeah. But I never really got into those flicks. I don't know about you guys. I, I've seen a few of them. Box you know what I mean? Brown. Yeah, but I never, I never got into those movies, so they're not in my list of movies so but if you guys have you know tell us what your b movies are i'm interested because yeah. it's it's so wide like i said it's a horror movies sci-fi westerns uh exploitation like it's it's really i mean there's thousands of b movies so if you guys want to drop your top five list in the, in the comment section i would uh, you know be very interested to see and uh, we, we should be very interested yeah so all right, we should wrap this up because we are into the 45-minute mark. Oh. This is the longest episode yet. So, oh well, there you go. <laughs> so anyways, guys, um, I just want to say thank you. Thanks for sticking around to the very end. Um, again, we're this close to 600 subscribers, so that's awesome. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so. That would be great. I don't, we don't monetize this channel, so we're not doing this to make money. We're just here because we want to talk horror movies with you guys because I... 
I myself love it, and I'm assuming you two guys are here too because you I love it as well. Horror. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's why we're doing this. So, anyways, um, yeah, drop us your top five in the comment section below and uh, let me know your B horror movies. And uh, I'm sure there'll be lots of comments on ones we missed. It always happens. But, uh, for sure. Yeah, guys, and uh, until stay next time, stay scared. Stay scared. Be scared. Be scared. Be scared. <laughs>